Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. Art and I have a very special guest, an author, a celebrity who you've never heard of recently, <laughs> and a fascinating love story. Art? Yeah, so uh, it was just a wonderful uh, opportunity to, for us to speak to Alexis Hunter, who is the author of Joy Lansing, A Body to Die For, subtitle A Love Story, and it truly is a wonderful love story. And uh, I'm, I'm going to let uh, Alexis uh, talk about this more in her own words, because it's a fascinating story. And uh, welcome, Alexis. Hi, everybody. Hi, John. Hi, Art. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, God, it's great to be on your show. Thank you. Now, if I slip and call you Alex, you won't be offended, will uh, that's, you? You can call me whatever you want to call me. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Uh, now, Alex, I have to tell you that I, I, when I heard about your book, I recognized the joy, the name Joy Lansing. Right. I had, I couldn't place it. Where, where, where was this name from? So I started looking at some of the pictures and reading about uh, Joy, and I got to tell you, she was a. Now you can't call her famous in the sense that, I don't know, Rock Hudson, Marilyn Monroe yeah. was famous. But she was certainly a very popular, successful actress and singer, and she she had a great career. Tell us about Joy. Oh, she was amazing. She started working as a young girl at, at age of fourteen. Worked at the studios, and uh, and she, her career progressed. She did I Love Lucy. She did all those shows. And what's interesting is. Um, a lot of your viewers, some of them probably know, but at that time, in I met her in 1969. At that time, there were only three channels. I mean, yes. a lot of people can't fathom that there were only three channels, but there were. <laughs> and, and Joy was on them all the time. She did over 100 TV shows. Yeah. In fact, uh, they, they sort of dubbed her as the Monroe of television. Yeah. Uh, Monroe and Mansfield and Mamie Van Doren didn't do TV, but Joy did. Yeah. And she was on all the sitcoms and all this Maverick, Sugarfoot. Oh my gosh. Uh, By the way, I, I, I want to I want to chime in here. I actually remember the name Joy uh, Lansing. I remember it. I didn't know that it was with an I at the moment. Okay, but I remember right. from the Bob Cummings show. Yeah, that was actually she... drop dead gorgeous right. uh, 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 star. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was exquisite. The, yeah. the well, she was, correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, but she was really the go-to girl if you needed a buxom blonde. She was the one. She, she was, was the one you went to, at, not only in television, but in movies. She did over 100 movies, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, she, yeah she, was, she was very popular because, you know, if they wanted, they wanted um, eye candy, basically. Yes. sure. Uh, uh, sexy blonde. She was the one that they called, and it was perfect. You yeah, know, she, and, she did a lot of work, and she had a very good career. So yeah, tell us, she so was tell a great me. actress in the sense that she could play all of these roles, whether it's the girlfriend or the, yeah. you know, the dumb blonde or the whatever. She and that's kept her working. She was yeah. in a lot of TV. Yeah, she had a great comedic sense. She, um, uh, I mean, she. She would <laughs> come up with uh, st straight lines. I mean, just she would play it so straight, even when people were goofing on her, you know, or yeah. or uh, making suggestive uh, innuendo. She was she was just like yeah. you know, no biggie. So it let's was, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit to this love story because it truly is. Um, I was absolutely enthralled with. The relationship the two of you had you were in your early 20s and she was already uh in uh, close to 40 or 40 ish right. when you met so tell us about um the the love give us some taste of this love story that people can be able to read about oh well it's it's an amazing thing here i am 21 years old uh just off the boat 
pretty much. <laughs> I, just moved, I, had moved, I had moved from Kansas uh, in 1964 in my senior year of high school and moved to California with my parents. And I decided, you know, I went to college for a while and I decided I was going to be a movie star, you know, like everyone. Sure. And I'm sure. And I moved to L.A. and uh, a friend of mine, I was living at the studio club at that time. Cool people were living there. Farrah Fawcett and Sally Struthers. Mm -hmm. uh, they lived there. And um, a friend of mine called me and said, oh, I cannot wear this mm -mm -mm monkey suit one more day. Do you want the job? It, it was a film. And I, of course I wanted the job because this was going to be my big break. And, and so you know, she took me to meet the producer and the director. Uh, Bob Slater was a director. And Anthony Cardoza, my God. I mean, names you would know, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> and I met them and I got the, I got the job. And there I am in the middle of the night um, in makeup. And it was such a low budget film. I mean, it was a stinko, probably the worst film ever made. <laughs> and and uh, there, there they are. I mean, this fake fur monkey suit, right? Yeah. And the title of the film was Bigfoot. So I was a Bigfoot monster. And, uh, and there I am in this monkey suit. And, and the only thing exposed was my face and my hands. And they were like spray painting black stuff. Uh, Good. on my hands and gluing this fake fur and, a, and my face the same thing and then with uh, the uh, plastic fake fangs and so there I am and I'm just sitting there I didn't know who was in the film I didn't know anything because that was unimportant because this was my starring role right in walk joy I thought I was gonna die because all when I was a kid in Kansas in the little population 10,000 Ark City Kansas um I would rush home from school to watch her on Bob Cummings. I just thought she was the most beautiful, beautiful woman I had ever seen in my life. And I was just fascinated with her. And in she walks. And I, if, if, if those uh, fangs had not been glued in, they would have fallen out. I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe. And, and she sat right next to me um, in makeup and, and she just started talking. She was so unpretentious and so sweet. And, uh, uh, we just clicked, you know, and, and then the following day I decided, well, you know, uh, all she sees me is this monkey suit. So I went in with full makeup on before I got there. And then, it, then she realized, and she, she just looked at me and she says, my God, you don't belong in the monkey suit, but whatever. And so, <laughs> and so, and so we just, uh, we just started to become really good friends and I would help her, uh, go over her lines um yeah and they were just awful uh, we would go over the line <laughs> it was so terrible oh my god you got to see it just just for the humor because uh, I, I swear it's the worst film and uh and we just became really good friends and then one night we because it was so low budget we shot all night right and so uh she said you want to go for coffee so we went to schwab's um and I mean, and we just sat and talked and talked and talked all night long. And, and we, we just, you know, the, we just bonded and, um, and, and things just progressed from there. And, um, and one day uh, I was at the studio club and um, one of the girls had a job working as a go-go dancer. And she, could, she couldn't do it. She says, you want that job? Of course I'm going to take any job I can get, right? And so, sure. And so um, at that time, Joy was having an affair with Sid Caesar. You know, and uh, I, I, t I talked to her and I said, uh, I'm, I'm working as a go-go dancer in, in L.A. Um, uh, do you think you and Sid might want to come and see me? And, you know, and... Uh, and she said, sure. And well, I didn't think she would show up, but, um, I'm there, there I am on this little platform in this terrible place. Uh, they would call it in, in the vernacular. They call those places toilets. It, it's awful, awful bar. 
smoke filled. Uh, I was the only woman there. Uh, it was just all guys. And I'm on the platform with this piped music, uh, dancing, go go dancing, and in this bikini. I forgot the bikini part, right? And, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so there I'm in the bikini, and in walks Joy. She was alone. And total, I mean, at that at, at that time, full makeup, hair spectacular, wearing a full length mink coat. I mean, just drop dead gorgeous. And she comes in and sits right around. It's it was kind of like, you know, in a piano bar where they have the 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 stools right around the piano. Well, they had that around the stage. And so she sits right in front of me. And I'm dancing away, and she's just smiling, smiling, and I'm just I'm going, oh my god! And I could tell that every man in the in the place was just staring at her. And then on on comes um, uh, my girl by the Temptations, and so I'm dancing away and dancing away, and and our eyes met, and she calls me, she, she goes like this, uh, and I lean over, and she says you don't belong here. Let's get out of here. So I left. I, how, sort of, how could you, how could you refuse that invitation? Right. Adios. <laughs> so, That's great. Well, I, it, Alex, so I, in your, in your yeah. story, yeah. you forgot to mention that you were drop dead gorgeous, a young 21 oh, year old blonde from the Midwest. Tall. You know, Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. And I'm sure you look great in go-go boots. Didn't they always have boots? <laughs> that was cute. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we just hit it off. And then she asked me to, you know, uh, to come over to her place. And we were just, at that time, uh, the, the cool thing, she had an apartment on uh, La Cienega and, uh, where the heck was it? Fountain. A uh, place called Fountain View West. It's now condos. And um, uh, we went to her apartment. We were just sitting and talking. And then uh, she has one, had one of those fake fireplaces in the wall. You know, you mm -hmm. flip a switch. That was really cool in 1970, uh, 69. That was really hip. So, so we're just sitting there with the fire. And then I, I'm just, you know, I knew I was gay. I'd had um, a previous experience. I mean, I was still pretty green, actually, but uh, but I knew who I was, and I was never, ever, ever going to say anything to Joy about it. I, you know, I just was so enamored with her. I would, I would never. I didn't want to lose her friendship, so I was, you know, being very cool about it. Yeah. And so we're just sitting and you know, lying there, uh, watching the fire, talking, and suddenly she leans over and kisses me. And I just about fainted, um, totally unexpected. And she couldn't believe because she was, uh, I mean, she had always been with men. She, uh, this was a total uh, surprise to her that there was an attraction. And uh, well, that, that's just the beginning. And I never left. That, wow. that was the beginning of our relationship. And I, I didn't leave until she died. You know, so I want to, uh, um, uh, uh, say a couple of things about why I so loved the book uh, is that it was that it wasn't cool to be gay. Forget about cool. It no. wasn't acceptable. It was but, illegal. And right. it was probably, yeah, it was right. illegal, but uh, it was people, uh, if they were never said anything to anybody. And, oh my God. It, no. And in fact, it was, it was uh, some 40 some odd years before you felt comfortable, uh, I guess mm -hmm. we're changing times with the approval right. of certain family members to finally in right. 2015, write the first version of the book. But I think right. that the, uh, and, and I'll leave it to uh, the audience to get the book and uh, which uh, is available on Amazon and lots of other places, uh, but uh, to, to read the details, but in this unfortunately short uh, love story, and it was truly a deep, deep love and affection you had for one another, yeah. as clear yes. from the story. She went through a lot of, uh, as did you, because of the time where, with uh, uh, 
uh, although she was a, 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 a naturally beautiful figure, but she uh, well, tried to do things like get uh, some silicon, uh, uh, not implants, but but straight injections, which we know became very controversial and caused a lot of people to get sick. And so she went through a whole series of of terrible uh, uh, medical conditions, which brought her right. to an untimely end. But you were there for all of this. And you mm -hmm. were a confidant to her and even to her third husband, Stan, who Stan. knew of your relationship. Uh, at... He did until after. Uh, oh, he, I, I, mean, I thought he knew all along. No, he suspected. He was yeah. so, na uh, uh, I don't know about naive, uh, or he had such a big ego, he couldn't possibly fathom that she would be with anyone but him or or an, another guy because uh, she she had dated she dated Sinatra she dated a lot of famous guys and uh, and Stan was just you know even though Joy and I had slept in the same bed uh, he didn't get it until after she died and then one day he because we stayed friends and he he said. Um, we were having lunch and he said, uh, I want to ask you a question. I said, sure. He said, were you guys more than friends? And I go, I go, um, do you really want to know Stan? And he said, yeah. And I said, yes. Now, yeah. Joy and I were together. We were in a relationship and, and he said, I had a funny feeling. I mean, my God. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and he, he, you know, he thought, it, he thought it was wonderful that we were together. Um, I mean, they were, uh, they were married in 1960 and separated in 65. Mm. They were legally separated, but they, you know, they still kept the marriage thing. He liked that. That way he did the women he dated. He didn't have to get married. He, you know, he could say, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still married. Mm. Uh, I can't get married. And, and joy, you know, it, I think he was a father figure to her. He was, um, he was very important in her life, and I totally understood that. And, you know, when you love someone, you want them to have what they need and who they need. So uh, I didn't, you know, it was no biggie. And and Stan, when she was ill, was very helpful in a lot of ways. He, uh, because she was still legally married to him, she, she was able to be on his uh, health insurance, which mm. was very, very helpful. Yeah. And, and, uh so, so he, let me ask you. Let me ask. Let me ask. Let me ask you this: uh, You had uh, you you were together for three years, and there are so many chapters, so many fascinating chapters. Uh, I I want people to go out and buy the book, okay? But if you had to sum Joy up in uh, three or four words or phrases, what would you want people to know about uh, Joy Lansing? About Joy, Joy was. the sweetest, kindest person I think I've ever known. She never, I, I never heard her say anything negative about uh, a fellow actor uh, or anyone. She was, uh, she was so loving and kind. Um, she was beautiful, but inside she was beautiful. Um, she was underappreciated. Um, she had some bad breaks. I mean, she had possibility. I mean, Lucy, uh, Lucy loved her and wanted to put her under contract. She saw Joy's comedic talent, and uh, Stan was her manager. That's that's what messed her up a lot of times. It was a lot of times her boyfriends were her managers, and so Stan, her husband, was her manager. And when the contract came in to work with, with Lucy, he said, you're too good for that. And he just threw away the contract. What a shame. Ah, yeah, she could have been so much bigger star. Yeah. Uh, Lucy recognized it, you know. Uh, it was, it was, she had bad breaks. Uh, but she, she was wonderful. That's all I can say. Okay, she good. I think that the, the wonderful word is 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 really good. But you are also uh, you weren't just a pretty face. Uh, yes, you 
drop dead gorgeous yourself. And we're going to be showing oh. some pictures uh, during this interview that I'll roll in. Uh, but it's obvious anybody can look any place. But uh, you also, uh, this was 40, 50 years ago. Uh, you right. didn't stop living. Uh, you uh, used your creative talents in a lot of different ways. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing uh, uh, since our passing? Oh, my God, I've had a million careers, which has been fun. Uh, let me see. Uh, I was a realtor. I was. Yeah. I was a realtor. I was um, a chauffeur, which was really cool. That's another book. I was. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good book. Um, and. Um, uh, massage therapist, esthetician, uh, uh, reporter, photojournalist, and uh, writer, and uh, and artist. I paint. I've shown in a lot of different places, and now I'm into making jewelry, and that's my passion. I, I finally found my passion. I love doing it. It's my favorite. Is there some place people can see uh, some of your work? Oh, sure. On uh, I have a website. It's Alex, A-L-A-X, Hunter, Palm Springs dot com. And on Facebook, I post things all the time. Uh, long story short, but uh, Joy called me Rachel because we we pretended to be sisters. That's the way we could get away with it. Sure. Uh, our relationship. Sure. Is, well, it was a different it was a different era. Different right. time. You couldn't, and, you couldn't come out as lovers. Oh my God, no! Uh, her career would have been destroyed. Uh, yeah. No, so uh, we were very cautious, and luckily we were both blonde and both had the same color eyes, so we could get away with it. Right. And so I was known uh, as Rachel Lansing, and so that's my name on Facebook. So uh, anybody out there, just friend me and let me know you saw me on the show. Uh, Alex, I have to ask a, a sensitive question, if you don't mind, sure. and that is. When Joy died, yes, you must have been destroyed. How? What? What did you do when? Because you lived with her while she was sick and, and dying, uh, and yeah, and she passed. What did you do? Um, after she died, I couldn't go back to our place. Uh, I, it would be too too depressing. So uh, my parents picked me up and took me back to their home in Covina, California. And I stayed there for probably about four to five months. And just, I watched the Olympics. Um, Cause this was, you know, when, right, right after she died, they had, you know, the, the Olympics where sure. the Israelis uh, uh, athletes were shot. So I was just glued to that. And I drank Boone's farm. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. a heavy drinker. So I just, you know, I, I did that and I crocheted and I, just, I was lost. I was lost for a couple of years. I don't remember, I don't really remember um, too much of what happened um, after she died. Cause it was just like, uh, I mean, she was my world. She was yeah. my life. She was everything yeah. to me. Well, you uh, know, your story is a, um, a beautiful love story. And it's mm -hmm. in that sense, it's very uplifting. But she did. It was very tragic that she died so young. And of course, yeah, she, yeah, she was only 43. Yeah. Well, and the, the papers at the time thought she was 37. Typical right. Hollywood. She no, because she lied. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> typical, because, I mean, uh, it, Hollywood still, it, if you're over a certain age, you don't work. You know, you're just sort of like yesterday's news. Right. You know, right. Throwing you out with the trash. It, you know, so. So she, I think she, she told me, you always knock off 10 years. That way, <laughs> if somebody asks you, you can figure out easily yeah. <laughs> what date. <laughs> well, I have to say that this is, uh, you're, you've been one of our most fascinating interviews. Uh, oh, thanks. That I, uh, I'm, I was particularly pleased because I do remember Joy from television. I watched a lot of television in those days. And, and, We'll talk about that some other time, the reasons why. But uh, I do remember her. And sure. uh, when I, when we got the opportunity to speak to you, I said, how neat is that? And when I read the book and learned of your story, uh, it was uh, 
it would have been interesting if both of you were born 50 years later and were having oh. your relationship today. Uh, oh my God. How different that might have been. But in any event, woulda, shoulda, coulda. But uh, I yeah. think uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us. We know that you probably have a lot of new things coming up in your life, and I want you to save them because I want you to come back and speak to us again. I would love it. You guys are so much fun. Well, we enjoyed having you. Oh, thank what you. A, what a wonderful opportunity, since times have changed, that you could tell your story. Yeah. And, and I've, share it with the rest of us. Yeah, I, I, I want to help people. There, there are so many kids that are bullied. Um, and I'm hoping through my book, people will understand that, you know, we all bleed the same. We all hurt the same. We all love. And, uh, and I, I'm hoping through example, people will have a little more compassion for each other. That that's my hope right there, and um and my soapbox is uh, if I can stop one person from having a silicone injection, I'm a happy person because yeah. it helped kill joy and it really screwed up my life because I had one injection too and it oh. yeah it really messed me up yeah. and um please don't do it that's all I can say is please don't do it. Well, I, think that, I think that's a good a good message uh, right, to end on. And we look forward to having you back again soon. Oh, uh, thank good, you, continue, continue good luck with uh, the book and uh, whatever else might still be on your plate going forward. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Art. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.